Hi there Firebirds fans, welcome to this week's episode of The Fireplace sponsored by Suncorp Team Girls. I am Claire Ferguson and I'm joined by Laura Clemisha. Clemmy, it was a tough, tough battle of the birds on the weekend. The Thunderbirds walked away as 11 point victors, but the Firebirds did take away that one bonus point from the first quarter. Rose must have been happy with the team's start to the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's always been a focus for us, is trying to get out to that strong start. And to go and win the, the first quarter, that really gave us a lot of confidence and being seen to be going well. You trust the plan, you do the grind, and the results should hopefully flow. We're obviously very disappointed with how the second half went, and it's just not good enough, as you know, to, pay, to play and turn up for 75% of the game. And we were just punished in that last quarter. Yeah, and a duo that probably did come into the mix a little bit at the tail end of the game and it made it tough for the defenders were Maria Palau and Sasha Glasgow. They were really quite seamless towards the tail end of the match. Just in terms of strategy and tactic and how you approach a combination like that, do you just stick to the grind and stick to the plan or do you have to have a little bit of variety and change things up when things aren't going right in situations like that? Mm, for sure, players, and I think um, we very much as a defensive unit changed our strategy from the previous week where the previous week we'd been caught up out of play a lot mm. our emphasis was to step off the body and really stay in play to build that pressure yeah and that's something that we focused on what we probably needed to kind of capitalize more on then was stay in play but then with the view to hunt and get the ball a bit more yeah. because as you would have seen once Sasha and Maria got the ball in the circle there weren't many rebounds coming oh, no, out. Very, very and I'm sure as you can understand as a defender, that is a really tough situation to be in when they're yeah. just shooting and sinking them every day. Um, so we did throw in a couple of change ups, but it really is probably up to us moving forward to make sure that that's a bit more proactive and that we're really taking control as opposed to being dictated to a bit by the shooting circle who were on fire. They were on fire. Another group that was on fire was the crowd. It was the last home game of the season at the Queensland State Netball Centre. Your fans have been incredible this year, haven't they? They really have. Um, I mean, just the fact that they keep showing up, given the tough run that we as a team has had this season, it really shows that they're about more than results. They're truly supporting us as people on and off the court. And it's just, it's just so beautiful. And I can't even tell you how inspiring it is to step on that court with the purple family and the purple army all around. It means a hell of a lot. Well, we're gonna lead into two more inspiring people. One in particular in this week's Team Girls Moment. Let me this week's Team Girls moment. I know it's going to make you cringe a little bit, but it's actually about you, my love. You announced your retirement from netball last week, as did Caitlin Nevins, and it's making Firebirds fans everywhere very, very sad. But I wanted to talk to you today about your netball career, not yes. so much in terms of the highlights on the court, but more so what netball's given you off the court, because I know to you it's so much more than just a game. It absolutely is, Claz. And when I think about what I'm going to miss the most, it's the people, it's the community, it's the support. I mean, I'm lucky enough to rock up every day to training and be around some of the people I love most in the world with a really supportive network of people who care about me off the court as much as what I do on the court. And I mean, netball to me has really taught me a lot of self-confidence, um, how to work in a team and how to respect each other and give things like feedback, which I know will be really helpful down the track in my work life, yeah, in my definitely. second career. Yeah. And even just things like resilience, learning how to pick yourself back up when things don't go to plan, goal setting. I've just been so fortunate to learn so much um, in such a supportive environment. Mm. Well, I feel very lucky as well to have been a part of your career and to have seen you grown and grow and see you come back from some of those knockbacks and setbacks. And for me, my favorite thing about you is that you are the one person who's probably shown me how to be myself because mm. Clemmy is ultimately 110% who she is and you've never been afraid to just put yourself forward and be who you are and work incredibly hard to get the outcome that you want and that's something that I find very inspiring and I know that not just the Firebirds teammates and the staff but also Firebirds fans generally can acknowledge how inspirational you are as an individual and how much we are going to miss you next year but we still get you for two more rounds. Yes. There's round 13 and 14 of Suncorp Super Netball to come so let's cover off on this week's game. You are heading west this weekend, Clem, mm. to take on the West Coast Fever in Perth. It's going to be the battle of the Jamaican sensations with Romelda Aitken at one end and Janelle Fowler at the other end. 
It's hard to take on those big tall timbers, isn't it? It is, absolutely. As we know from training against Romelda every week at training, their height and strength makes it a really tricky job for a defender when that ball's placed just perfectly. Yeah. So as a defence end, we have a big job to do, but we're going to be relying on our friends down the court, our wing defence, our centre, even the goal attack and wing attack to slow that ball up so that there are big arms over that feed to give us the best chance of getting a touch to that ball in. It's always my trick question when I go to clinics who hears a defender and I wait to see how many players put their hand up on the court and of course we want seven people to put their <laughs> hand up. But this is the game when, when that is, the it's the truth, isn't it? Because if you don't have that full court defensive mm. pressure, there's nothing you can do to decept, like, intercept the ball by the time the ball hits circle edge. So yes. it's really that concept of you have to create separation and distance mm. and try and isolate those fever players mm. as much as possible, don't you? For, for you or Tara or Kim to be able to get a chance to get hand on ball. For sure, at the end of the day, it's a full team effort. At the back, us as goalkeepers don't have a chance if the centre court are hitting that circle and being able to place a perfect ball in. It's up to our teammates to really do the grind out the front to make those players as uncomfortable as possible so that they're just a little bit off balance or they're a little bit flustered when they put that ball in and that's when we're going to get some turnovers and tips. Um, so yes, we might be able to be the ones that pick up the scraps, but at the end of the day, it's all about the team and the teamwork. Well, we will have our eyes glued to our television and our apps looking forward to watching another performance by the Queensland Fibers and fingers crossed that we can get that win. But if we don't, we're just looking for great performances from everybody and for that full team effort out there on court. So good luck, Clemmy. Thanks, Buzz. And we'll look forward to seeing the Firebirds out in full force once again.